Evolution versus Creation, Part 3. If you haven't yet listened to Parts 1 and 2, I'd encourage you to do that. So let's look at the next point. Fossils. Fossils are the remains of dead creatures and plants, so animal and plant, that have been buried usually by a sudden cataclysmic activity such as a flood or volcanic eruption. Many, many fossils show death consistent with such a sudden catastrophic burial, which supports the biblical account of a global worldwide flood, as we read in Genesis in the time of Noah, where God instructed him to build the ark. Even today, fossil plates show the footprints of both a human and a dinosaur on the same fossil plate, which shows they lived in the same era, side by side. We have survived. They have become extinct. And now, even so-called evolutionary scientists, notice I keep saying so-called, because there's just an unproven theory, nothing factual about it. Even they are starting to agree that certain ravines and chasms or canyons occurred within a short period of time. And I'll tell you why they have to agree. I'm going to give you scientific proof, historical, geological proof. They now have to change their tune. Because all this time they would say, oh, this ravine or this chasm or canyon occurred some time back in the Ice Age. Because they cannot bring themselves to admit that it happened in Noah's time as a result of the global flood and then the flood waters receding from the face of the earth. In fact, almost all ancient cultures, this is history, have a story in their histories about a great flood that once covered the whole earth. And now here's fact. In 1980, it was in March of 1980, that in Northwest United States, in the state of Washington, Mount St. Helens erupted. And overnight, of course there was devastation, this volcanic eruption, but basically overnight, not over a million billion years, in one day, 24 hours, overnight, a mini canyon was formed. A mini canyon. The Grand Canyon is in northern Arizona, but this is two states, or two and a half states up northwest in Washington state. Overnight, a mini canyon was formed. It did not take millions and millions of years of a trickle of some river flowing through to create this canyon. Right in your face for all the so-called evolutionary scientists. Next point. What does the word day mean? The Hebrew word for day it used in Genesis chapter 1 is the word yom. Y O M. Y O M. Yom. That's the Hebrew word. It's important to understand that almost any word in different languages can have two or more meanings depending on the context. In English, if I say bear, what do I mean? B E A R is to bear someone's burden or to carry a load. It could be the animal, the bear. B A R E is bear. You know, bare body, bare foot, without shoes. So it could have so many meanings. The same single word. So also in Hebrew, the word yom, which is the Hebrew word for day, depending on the context. So let's look at the word yom for day in Genesis chapter 1 as it's used for creation. This is creation versus evolution. So in Genesis chapter 1, we find even respected Hebrew dictionaries. There are some called the Brown, Driver, and the Briggs lexicon. They give a number of meanings for the word yom depending on its context. One of the passages they give for yom's for yom, meaning an ordinary day. You know what I mean by day. 
24 hours. Sunrise, sunset, work, sleep. One day, 24 hours. So, one of the passages they give for Yom, meaning an ordinary day, happens to be Genesis chapter 1. When it talks about God and creation. Day 1, day 2, day 3. The reason is obvious. In Hebrew, every time the word Yom is used with a number, like first day, second day, third day, or day four, day five, day six. Every time the word Yom in Hebrew is used with a number, it means exactly a 24-hour day. And there's one other way that it means exactly 24 hours in Hebrew. Every time in the Old Testament, every time in the Old Testament, when the word Yom is used with a phrase, evening and morning, it means exactly 24 hour day. Now the Jewish people counted the day from sunset to the next day sunset. Not from sunrise like we do. So evening and morning. Whenever it says evening and morning with the word Yom, it means exactly a 24 hour day. So the two rules in Hebrew for the word Yom or day means exactly a 24 hour day is when the word Yom is with a number or it has the phrase evening and morning. Are you ready for this? In the entire Bible, 66 books, only in Genesis for the time of creation, for the description of creation. So you can see this is exactly the opposite. Moses was absolutely not on drugs. God knew how mankind would try to pervert the truth of creation. He had Moses by the Holy Spirit right after day one. And the evening and the morning, that's the phrase, where the first, that's the number, Yom, day. So here, using the rules of Hebrew grammar, the word Yom doesn't just have a number, it also has the phrase evening and morning, a double emphasis by God, the Holy Spirit, upon Moses to impact him and every reader that Yom in Genesis for each day of creation was exactly a 24-hour day. The evening and the morning for the first day. The evening and the morning for the second day. And so on, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and on the seventh day, God rested. There is no doubt that the writer, in this case Moses, by the inspiration and guidance of the Holy Spirit, is being emphatic, doubly emphatic, that these are ordinary 24-hour days. And if not, then you could read it as, and the evening and the morning were the first one million years, or the first 25 million years, or the evening and the morning were the first billion years. But sorry, it's not so. The evening and the morning for the first yom, 24-hour day. This, my friends, is the biggest smokescreen behind which these so-called evolutionary scientists and uh, theistic evolutionists hide by using the term millions and billions. And that's their biggest smoke screen. That's like them pumping their fog machine to obscure the facts as given to us in God's holy word, the Bible. This is the end of part three. I trust you first catch up part one and two before we do this and then we move on to part four.